Hi, I'm JP, and I'm joined by Pop Up Podcasting producers Will, Lisa, and Richard. Emma, our intern, is taking care of recording and production uh, on the other side of the glass. Thanks, Emma. Uh, today is part two of our conversation about origin stories. Last time we heard uh, from you three producers, uh, and this time you're turning the tables on me, and you'll be asking me some questions about how I started the company and uh, how we got to where we are today. Let's get into it. Uh, over to you, Lisa, with the first question. Yeah. So I was going to say, obviously, now you've got the company and this is going on, but what was sort of the trajectory early on that got you into audio editing in the first place? Good question. Um, yeah, I, I, I started, uh, like we were talking in the last episode, uh, I started like you guys as, as a podcast fan and a podcast listener. Um, and this was you know, 2010 ish. Uh, I was working at the university of, uh, university of Toronto, actually living in Toronto. Um, and, uh, working with a friend of mine, uh, and every Monday we would talk about that weekend's episode of this American life. We were both, uh, uh avid listeners uh, of that show, uh, and just kind of like got to talking and decided to, to try our hand at podcasting uh, as well. So, um, really kind of like a hobby to begin with. Uh, we weren't like, we're going to get rich and build a huge audience or anything like that. We just wanted to, to play around with it and, and try it out. Um, we were both, uh, single at the time and both trying out online dating, uh, for the first time. So we were, uh, uh, decided to, to do our podcast around that. So our, our podcast was called, I like you. Um, and uh are those episodes still live i no. <laughs> i mean uh, there's probably some that can be left. found i have a secret archive uh of okay, them but okay. um yeah i'm i'm like very much an an experiential learner so i'm like i gotta make all the mistakes i gotta just like dive in and muck around with things uh to figure them out so that's that's really how i yeah how how i got into um, podcast editing and uh and later i I went into um, uh, the Transom Story Workshop, which is this um, uh, radio intensive, uh, radio documentary intensive down in the States. Um, so that was like me trying to, deciding to kind of go pro uh, from there. Uh, and uh, yeah, kind of got into doing some freelance work on the side after that and, and eventually uh, quit my job and worked as a as a radio and podcasting freelancer for five years. Uh, and then, um, Papa podcasting, uh, was, was born basically out of clients asking me, you know, is there somewhere we can like go to record this? Cause I was doing a lot of just like, here's how you can record yourself at home, send me the files, blah, blah, blah. And, and people were starting to, to get more professional about it and wanting, wanting a space to do that. And I thought, uh, let's, let's give it a go. And I was living in Ottawa at the time. So, so open the, the Ottawa studio, uh, from there. JP, you mentioned this American life, but do you remember what the sort of first hook was with podcasting that got you like, uh, and obviously really captured you as you, you know, go on to start a business around it and everything like that. But do you remember what the first thing was that got you hooked? Yeah, it, it, it's a good, it's a good question. Um, and it's, it's hard to say, like I've, we were like a, a CBC radio family growing up. Yep. It was just like on in the kitchen all the time and, and in the car uh, and stuff. So I kind of knew a little bit about the, the, the power of audio and, you know, how some, I mean, as a kid, the, the news and stuff I would tune out, but you know, every so often something would come on that would really capture my attention. So I think it's, you know, it, it comes from that a bit, but podcasting specifically is like, this is, this is real, right? This is like, I don't know, we throw around the word authentic a lot and I'm kind of sick of it in some ways, but, but it, it was, it was real and authentic. And, and, you know, I would listen to comedy podcasts where they would like swear and talk about, you know, things like that you wouldn't hear on the normal radio. So, so, you know, this American life is like a very like professional NPR show. Um, but I think their thing is also like, getting out of the studio and getting into these intimate moments in people's lives and, and stuff like that. So I, I think, I think it was sort of that, um, that, that realness, uh, 
of it. Like every so often you think, am I supposed to be hearing this, you know, or, or, yep. uh, uh, one of my, one of my like little favorite things in podcasting is when somebody in a podcast I'm listening to says, we got to cut that out. Like producer, cut that out. And you're like, they, they clearly like either forgot to take it out or, or decided to leave it in because yep. it, it was, you know, it's a fun moment. And, uh, I really like those things. Um, I, I also, I've also really always been into like tech. I was, you know, in the, yeah. the I was in the AV club in school and, you know, like always played with computers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, that kind of, connection of of tech and this like kind of storytelling realness being a fly on the wall um i'm also yeah. an in, an introvert so i don't like uh being a fly on the wall is very appealing to me where I, like i don't have to participate in this like intense yeah. conversation but i can listen to it and learn from it and and uh and get all the juicy gossip so yeah <laughs> i definitely understand yeah, you, you being in the av club that that like that makes a lot of sense because <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah like mm -hmm. i don't know like you, you when we get a new piece of tech or program or something i oh, yeah. you know, definitely pick up on the enthusiasm so that's yeah, cool mm -hmm. that's sort of like interest in like the new thing storytelling kind of merges perfectly with the uh, podcasting so yeah, yeah i think you did a good job in uh finding yeah. a passion there yeah yeah no it's it's been yeah. good you you said like uh you started the company because you had people asking you like if there were spaces around to like mm -hmm. record stuff so that was like the birth of the idea. Was there, did you ever think about it before then? Um, yeah. I mean, I, uh, I think I, I was dreaming of it when I was, you know, sitting at home editing podcasts with, uh, uh, you know, from, from clients that sent, sent me terrible sounding audio. Of like yeah. this feels like very like, you know, desk, desk in the corner of my bedroom. And I'm like, it'd be co so cool to have like a real studio and like, you know, um, this, this real space, but, um, I've also had this kind of entrepreneurial bug for, for a really long time. Um, and I have a really hard, I think part of the reason I like in the last episode, you guys were talking about how I like, I try and it's not always possible, but I try to be a very like flexible and understanding boss and, and, um, you know, uh, bring, bring some empathy to the table, uh, about the, the work that's, you know, sometimes not as fun and, and stuff like that. But I, I think I come by that honestly, because, uh, I, I have, tr I've had trouble in the past with like being an employee and like, you know, being like, do this this way. Cause that's the way we do it. And, you know, thinking in my head, oh, there's a, there's, I think there's a better way, but no, you have to do it this way. Or, um, you know, working on something where, uh, you know, the, the fruits of your labor never see the light of day and, and stuff like that. So it's, um, I think in some ways I, I started a company because I have trouble being, uh, working for someone else. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I mean, I, I, like, I have struggled being an employee for other companies because of what you mentioned, like some, like, especially when you go work for like huge, massive companies or chains or whatever, and it's just, everyone's just kind of collecting paychecks or whatever. It, it can be very demoralizing. Like your bosses won't really talk to you at all. They'll just, like, no one cares about anybody. It's, it's kind of, it's just really like sad to go into work and just, it's not fun. Yeah. And like, I think you did a great job of not instilling that, that here, because like, you'll get like a random like message from JP being like, Hey, good job on this. And you're like, Oh, cool. Thanks. You know, like just Wait, little you things get those like that. Messages? Those, I mean, <laughs> Richard, I'm, those are just between you and me. I, I, um, no, I don't get, I don't get those messages, but you know, like it, it's, it's, it's nice. It's just yeah. like, okay, cool. Like everyone kind of appreciates each other at the company. So I think you could like your reasoning behind starting the company. I think, uh, you succeeded in what you wanted to do for sure. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'll say like, just, you know, hearing you, um, I don't know. I just thought of another thing. So I'll say it. Being a freelancer uh, also wasn't my bag. And I think, I think this, like this company is sort of the evolution of, of um, quitting my job at the university of Toronto, which, which wasn't really fulfilling to me becoming a freelancer. Parts of that were great, but parts of it were like, Oh, I'm like, 
having to come up with story ideas I can pitch to shows all the time. And like, there's a lot of, you know, unpaid parts of this job where I'm just like trying to find the next gig. Um, and, uh, and part of it was to like bring together a bit more of like a collective, like the, the four of us to, um, have a, a steadier stream of work and, and, you know, even out some of those, those bumps in the road and also have this magnet of like the studio and the company where ideally uh, people are finding us and, you know, and working with us longer term uh, as opposed to it being really like every Monday waking up and saying like, Oh, where am I going to find the next, uh, you know, the next paycheck. So yeah, um, that's, that's part of it too. So not to focus on difficulty and hurdles, but with starting the company, we talked a bit about what were the things that came together that made that work and why you liked it. But what were some of the hurdles that you did have to overcome in, once you started the company? Yeah, um, I'm still I'm still overcoming hurdles, I would say. <laughs> it's, not, it's not always smooth sailing, but um, it, it's, I don't know, it's sort of this double-edged sword of like, I really like learning new things and figuring things out. But also I started this company being like, I'm, I think I'm pretty good at editing podcasts. I can do this, like this, this could be my living. Um, and then, and then starting a company is like a whole other thing. And you have to like deal with like, you know, HR and accounting and um, marketing and sales and, you know, systems and all this. And like, there is a part of me that, as you guys know, from our, our work on our task management system, where I'm like, this is kind of cool. I like nerding out on this stupid task management system. Um, but it, uh, uh, it's, it's also, yeah, it's like a, a daily, a daily challenge. So for me, it's the, it keeps me invested in a way where, you know, if, if you like solving problems, start a company because you'll you'll have a never ending bucket of problems to <laughs> to pull from. Um, but uh, uh, but it's but that's that's also not easy sometimes. And like I have, you know, friends and my wife and, you know, we're in Ottawa. A lot of people work for the, the federal government. And and um, and I, I'm, I'm sure you guys have had this this thought, too, because we don't always have, um, you know, steady work and clients are wanting things after hours and blah, blah, blah. But like, gee, it would be kind of nice to just have that nine to five with like, you know, benefits and a pension and, and all the rest of it. And I like, I've worked for the government a little bit earlier in my, in my career. And, and so I, I, in those moments, I try to remind myself of like how kind of soul sucking I found that. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. It's, it's not, <laughs> Yeah, you know, like I honestly, like I don't, I I don't think of my friends and family who who work those jobs as like, you know, mindless drones or you know whatever. <laughs> like they're 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 doing good work and they have good colleagues they work with and and they you know for the most part enjoy their enjoy their jobs. But like, uh, it just for for me personally, I just hit a wall and I'm like, I just can't you know fill out another TPS report or, or whatever it is. Um, no, I mean, I, I like agree like that, that nine to five thing. It's not really for me. Like, you know, I, I, I like this style of work where you, you get bookings, you get clients, you, you like new stuff coming in not all the time. And there's always new challenges and it, it's, it's, it's exciting. So yeah, it's definitely, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Yeah. It's, I'm not a nine to five guy. Yeah. I'm trying to think of though, in relation to your question, if there's a, yeah, like a specific, a specific challenge, um, uh, we, I mean, the, the, the most recent challenge and it, it, it worked out well in the end was, uh, uh, working with Will on building the new studio. Um, he is a really hard to, guy to get along with. And yeah. I was happy you <laughs> ended with on building the new studio there. I thought it was just going to be on working with Will. Oh, no, oh, okay. it, was, it was a pleasure working with Will, but, um, uh, I see. but we, you know, we, we, we have lots of constraints. We don't have unlimited budget and blah, blah, blah. And like we were, we had to pivot our studio setup for COVID. And then we're like, oh, COVID's kind of settling down. We can, we can change it up again, but we still had this like very limited footprint to work with. So kind of 
fitting every scenario that we want into that and make sure that all the clients were still going to be happy um, was was like a a technical challenge, um, I guess. Uh, and otherwise, like uh, you know, I've I've felt very lucky that during COVID and um, uh, and and throughout our our growth as a company, we that we have grown and it, it's been fairly organic where a lot of our clients are, are recommending us to other people and we have word of mouth and um, stuff like that. But I think that kind of marketing and branding side of it is going to, is going to be the, the next um, hurdle for me because there's lots of tools out there for people to do this at home uh, on their own. There's other companies coming into the space. We are kind of a, and had an early uh early mover advantage where you know we still have the issue of like oh ottawa has a podcast studio cool yeah. i didn't know um yeah. so it's not it's not the kind of you know we don't have a lot of competition but we also have lots of um sort of f- indirect competition yeah <laughs> like friction as far as just like yeah. do, do, is this a type of business that exists that i you know that, that can yeah. help me with my problems i, I do have an, a, a follow-up question about because you mentioned the studio so i was i was wondering so you get the idea for for the the company and then you want to start it how long between like okay you thought of it and getting the space up and running yeah um so okay you've you've triggered another another memory i have a terrible memory by the way <laughs> so it's, it's, it's comes in drips and draps but um part of it too was i uh i applied for a job and and didn't get it and that was part of starting pop-up podcasting i was freelancing and i was like i applied for you know several jobs along the way my 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 mom uh the other day i was telling her like you know business has been a bit slower lately it's tough um, and she's like such a fan of being like, well, have you thought about getting a job at CBC? Um, and <laughs> <laughs> I just like, I, I always, you know, uh, like I, I tried for five years to get a job at CBC, to be honest, like, it, you know, it, yeah, it's tough. it wasn't, it's tough to get in the, your foot in the door. And, and, you know, some of the people I talked to, maybe I dodged a bullet by not going there, but, um, uh, anyway, this was a different job where it was sort of like, okay, I want, I want to stop freelancing alone at home all the time. I want to, you know, um, work at work in a team and stuff like that. Uh, so I applied for a job at, um, uh, Sh- Shopify, Shopify, famous Ottawa company. Shopify was, was hiring a, a full-time podcast producer, uh, and I got oh, wow. through like a couple rounds of interviews, um, and, uh, and then, and then didn't, didn't end up getting the job. They um, missed out. Um, yeah. Well, there you go. Maybe <laughs> I missed out on getting those, those sweet Shopify stock options. <laughs> uh, but, uh, uh, it was, you know, after that, it was sort of like, okay, this is like, there are not a lot of people hiring full-time positions in this space. Uh, that, you know, this was seven years ago, six years ago, something like that. Um, so maybe I have to do something, uh, on my own. And that, that was, yeah, there was this moment of like, okay, that was like, I was kind of like hoping that was going to work out. It didn't work out. Time to regroup, try something else. Cause I'd been, I had been trying to, uh, yeah, to get, to get a, get a real job. Um, my mom would have been so happy. Uh, <laughs> so how long from that? So how long from that point yeah. did you have your first running yeah. studio? Yeah. So good, good question. It's I don't I don't remember the timeline super well. So pop up podcasting opened in. I think I got the lease. I got mm-hmm. I got the space at the beginning of February, twenty seventeen, and it was oh it, wow it, it, new. Yeah. I'm just thinking when I came on, then you wouldn't have been up for very long. I didn't realize that. It was, it was, it was early days for sure. Um, and we, um, yeah, it was probably like a, a few months, honestly. And like, I, I've, I've done, like, I've done kind of web design. I've like, I can kind of hack together some graphic design, whatever. So it was kind of like stuff I was just, um, in between freelance gigs, 
uh, churning away at, at doing a website and stuff. And I, I learned, I learned this concept, um, in, in my sort of entrepreneurial journey of the minimum viable product. And that's really like what's, what's helped me like get going on podcast on, on opening pop up podcasting. It was really like, okay, what's like, what's the, what's the tiniest space I can get downtown. I want it. I want it to be downtown because there's lots of businesses and parliament and all that. Um, you know, what are like the, the cheapest professional looking and sounding mics? What's the like, you know, so there's all this in Lisa remembers the original studio. We didn't have like a separation of two rooms, control room and a, and a studio oh, space. Wow. It was like the engineer desk was in the corner and the recording oh. table was at the other end of the room. Um, so uh, yeah. So, so you yeah, added that wall? Was, no. So was, we were on the 12th floor and now, oh, so you moved. now okay. we're on the fifth floor. I wish so. we could, maybe we could find out if it's vacant. Maybe yeah. we could show yeah, Richard. That would be, That'd be so cool. <laughs> be Did, cool. Wait, did Will see the 12th floor too? I don't know. It's I tiny, so. yeah. tiny guys. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. yeah. Cool. It's, I didn't know. That's our cool. current space is still pretty tiny. Um, but, uh, uh, but, but you did job, a good job though. with the space. It was a good use of space. Yeah. Oh well, that's awesome. It was basically like a I, I I think of it as a parking space in some ways of like <laughs> right. this kind yeah. of like long narrow um and not very wide space. But uh yeah, so so to answer I mean it was probably like a few months. That's what I would assume because yeah. there's a lot of a lot of setting up to do, right? Like, yeah. But we can show pictures yeah. to, like Richard, we can show him pictures, right? Yeah. You have pictures. Yeah. Oh cool. yeah. yeah. In fact, here's a picture of the old studio space. <laughs> <Right now>. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Magic. Pretty cool, right, Richard? Anyway, yeah. A few months. A few months for sure. Cool. Um, but it was it was it was pretty quick. And like I, I enjoy that kind of again, like the tech, the setup, the blah blah blah. Yeah. So uh, I was putting a lot of energy into it. And I was also yeah. just like what well, can we do to like I, get to just like doors open first client? Um, like I bought, so I bought an old table off Kijiji. Like there was, there was a lot of scrounging and, and stuff. So for the viewers who don't know, we have a lot of TVs in the studio. How many TVs mm. were in the first iteration of the studio? Zero. I think there was like oh. one computer monitor. Uh, uh, Lisa's uh, life was so much easier back then. She hates all the TVs. Yeah. <laughs> There's, there's a lot of. I'm coming around. I'm coming around. <laughs> the one remote works on all the TVs, so sometimes you turn on one TV and the other two turn off, and blah blah blah. Anyway, so many TVs. So JP, many. Do you it remember is funny, first though, client that like came a... in? It's a good question. First client. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't. I remember like. Uh, Quajo Caramantang was, was a doctor, um, here, in, here in town, uh, was, was early, I think. Um, okay. wow. no. And there were, there were a few like funny ones where it was like, oh, you have a studio. Like we, uh, the conservative party is in the building or was, and, and they were like, oh, we have these little like anti-Trudeau videos that we need, we need to, oh, to wow. record voiceover for. Uh, nice. can, can we come down and record That's those? Funny. And like, you know, it's, sure. I guess. Before it was popular. Who were, the, yeah. who were the two people, the comedians? I liked their show. That was a funny yeah, one to record. Yeah, Ryan, oh, wow. Ryan Mulligan and Christina. I can't remember her last name. Shout out to them. Yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know that you guys had like a comedian. That, that was a really fun show. Uh, scene, yeah. scene partners is the show. I'm, I'm not sure if they're still running. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Nice. That was, that was a fun one for sure. Nice. Yeah. They were always funny. Yeah. So um, JP you touched on a sort of a bunch of different, you know, different spaces the studio has been in different sort of uh, changes in the business pandemic hiring, you know, interns and then staff and everything. Is there, you know, if you could go back, you know, with all the lessons learned, any, you know, kind of advice you'd want to um, impart to yourself or, you know, uh, that that tip you'd want to give yourself to save yourself some trouble down the road? What would it be? Yeah. Um, <laughs> good question. It, uh, I it, think I did, sure, it. I did it. I did it perfectly. It's, <laughs> nah, it's, de it's definitely. Um, bring on Richard earlier. Bring on Richard at first so you don't have to pay him for all the <laughs> freelance work. <laughs> yeah, really. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unta unpaid internships. They're so, so sweet. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I. Uh, uh, Unpaid internships are kind of awkward as our unpaid intern uh, listens in here. It's recording this. Um, yeah. We, uh, uh, 
Well, I was thinking about, you know, you guys were talking about how it was nice to to get to know me before we uh, started working together. And, and, and I, I appreciate that about internships too, is that uh, we can, we can get to know each other and see if it'd be a good fit. Um, but if it wasn't for academic credit, I would not hire unpaid interns. I'm, I'm generally against that, but uh, it's turned out to be a good, a good place to, yep. uh, to find, uh, you know, good, 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 great. Why am I? Oh God. Great employees. <laughs> <laughs> great, great employees. Yeah. Great stuff. Um, great place to stutter JP. Uh, so what was the question? Oh, lessons learned. The, yeah. The, just a, maybe like one piece of advice, like right. maybe more like, yeah. uh, yeah. Big picture business wise or so. It doesn't even have it could be something small that just would have been a lifesaver or something, I guess. Yeah. Um hindsight's 2020, but um I mean right now I'm I, I'm realizing the importance of focusing on the stuff I'm not already good at. Um so, you know, again, sort of that like what's that? machine that brings in clients month after month. Um, we got really lucky on, on, um, uh, on word of mouth and, and Google and stuff like that. But, um, you know, especially now that we have a, a, a team and, and all this, like, uh, I want to, I want to be able to, you know, make your jobs, uh, fruitful and, and, um, and all the rest of it and, and just have the, you know, the company operate, I think maybe every entrepreneur goes through this, but I, I, I certainly have where like, I, I have imposter syndrome where I'm like, this isn't like, this doesn't always feel like a real company. Some of the things we do are kind of like rinky dink and, you know, and I just like the, um, so, so my, my advice to my former self would be, if you want this to be a real company, uh, and build a real team around it. You got to focus on the the kind of business fundamentals too, uh, a bit a bit more. Uh, in some ways, I I, uh, I I'm good at making podcasts. I think, and I, I hired a bunch of people who are good at making podcasts. But like somebody, namely me, needs to to worry more about the the stuff that's not making podcasts. So um, mm. I'm. You, that's a good one yeah yeah I, I, it it's kind of like the the annoying things in some ways about like starting a company w yeah. something you enjoy doing and then you're like okay actually i have to like hire and you guys know that i've kind of like started over the past couple of years especially you know having kids and stuff started to step away from day-to-day -day production and starting to you know to, to focus more on those those things but uh yeah there is this aspect to it that's like oh but i i really like making podcasts <laughs> yeah no that's a good point i mean yeah you yeah you start the company because you like making podcasts but you forget there's a company to run so there's so much more and yeah. i yeah i can only imagine i mean that's a that's a good piece of advice to give your younger self yeah focus on uh focus on everything that is not uh, what you're already good at. Yeah. I, I, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and uh, some people say, you know, uh, and, and hopefully we can grow to the size uh, of doing this eventually, but your, your first hire shouldn't be another you. It should be somebody who's good at all that stuff that you're not good at. Right. Um, and that's, you know, not to, not to uh, throw shade on, on hiring you guys. I'm, I'm really happy with the decision and it's, you know, it's important for me to be able to, um, understand the business and, and, and work on those yeah. aspects myself too, uh, as opposed to just bringing in a, a hired gun, um, to, to do that stuff. So yeah. Thanks so much for listening to pop-up podcasting and thanks to Will, Lisa, and Richard for joining me and to Emma as well in the control room. See you next time. Produced at pop-up podcasting.